What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how I personally go about finding the best possible amenities to add to my short-term rental properties and making sure that I'm gonna get the biggest bang for my buck on those amenities. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. And I wanna start out this video by talking about the fundamental way that I think through amenities before I give you some tips and tricks that I think are gonna be really helpful. Because I'm a big believer in the fundamentals and having the right way to think about a problem, that's ultimately what allows you to solve that problem really effectively, not the tips and tricks and strategies. They're not worth anything without the fundamental way of thinking through the problem. And so when it comes to adding amenities, I think that too many people get kind of lost in the clouds with it and it's too conceptual for them. Am I gonna get a good return on this or am I not? It's a very numbers driven decision they're trying to make and they're trying to be too analytical about it. And so the way that I like to work with investors and work with people to shape them into, into thinking about this problem is to really have them put themselves in the mind of the guest, the ideal guest avatar that's gonna be staying with them at that property. So with any investor, I work with, I have them complete these worksheets like a guest avatar worksheet to really outline exactly who the person is that's going to be staying at that property. And then we ultimately just want to think about what is going to cause that guest to either pay more for our property than they would have otherwise or to choose our property over another property in the market. If our amenities aren't going to do either one of those two things, then it's probably not worth adding the amenity. With the sole exception of maybe if you can find something that isn't necessarily gonna command a higher nightly rate, isn't gonna get them to book us over the competition, but is going to get them to book with us again when they otherwise might not have, have we not had that amenity, um, then that's one other way that you can have an amenity that actually does give you a good return on your investment. A good example of the latter one is gonna be really comfortable mattresses. You can imagine that Comfortable mattresses are not necessarily something you can really convey in the listing or the photos all that well. You can speak to it, but ultimately the proof is in the pudding. You gotta lay on that mattress to know if it's truly comfortable or not. And so although having a comfortable mattress or comfortable bedding isn't likely going to allow, allow you to charge a premium for your property, and it may or may not cause someone to actually book with you over the competition, because generally they're gonna assume that your competition has comfortable bed as well. Uh, but having a really comfortable bed is definitely gonna be a deal breaker on whether they stay there again or not. If they stay there and you have an uncomfortable bed, it doesn't really matter how great the rest of your property is and how what other amenities you have, they're probably not gonna book your place again. But if you have a nice comfortable bed, that will lead to repeat bookings. But the majority of your focus, you're gonna to wanna to put on those amenities that are actually gonna drive a higher nightly rate for the property or are gonna get people to choose your property over the competition. And the best way to think that through, later on in the video, I am gonna give you some tips and tricks to get inspiration for some things that are really, really working well in your market specifically. But right now, I wanna share with you that the best way to do that, initially at least, is just to think it through, right? Just put yourself in the shoes, in the mind of that ideal guest. Are they coming with a group of people? Are they coming solo? Are they coming as a couple? Why are they coming? What kind of things are they gonna do when they're there at the property or in the area? And what could you do to make that stay for them more comfortable, more convenient, more valuable. For example, if someone's coming in for business, then they're probably gonna wake up, they're gonna go shower. Maybe they forgot their toothbrush, so having some toiletries and amenities and things like a toothbrush there for them could be really helpful. Having some nice soap, things like that, could be really helpful, could actually cause them to book your place over another for the convenience or be willing to pay a higher nightly rate. Having a coffee maker, having fast Wi-Fi, those things are gonna be really important to that ideal guest because what they're gonna do is probably going to be jumping on the internet, doing some work potentially, they're going to want to have a cup of coffee, they're going to want to have quick and easy access to public transit, and they're going to be off to work. They're probably not going to be hanging out playing board games at the property, so adding board games there isn't really going to add much value to them. Whereas if you think about a larger property that's in a more rural setting, it's more of a vacation property. Um, those types of guests, they're probably gonna come with a group of people. What's gonna happen with their morning? Well, they're gonna wake up. Are they gonna have an alarm clock waking them up? Probably not. Are they gonna want blackout blinds so that they can have a nice sleep in on their time off? Probably a good amenity to have. 
right? And then when they get to the kitchen, they're probably gonna be cooking for a large group. So having amenities like multiple frying pans, you know, lots of dishware, all those sorts of things are gonna be really helpful. They may have a child with them, so having a high seat for the child to sit at, at the table with them, gonna be really helpful. They might wanna put that child in a pack and play crib or a little playpen later on in the day. They might not really know what to do that day in the area, so local recommendations or some snowshoes for them to go snowshoeing, some hiking poles for them to go hiking, some activities for them to do around the house or in the backyard those things are all gonna add value to their stay. So it's really important, again, to just think through your ideal guest and what they're actually gonna do when they stay at your property. That's gonna be what'll actually help you to add the best amenities and just think through this problem in general. Now, as far as my tips and tricks for how to get some really good inspiration and see categorically just what is actually working in your market and what's maybe not working so well, go over to AirDNA, get a subscription if you don't already have one, go to your market, and then look at the top properties in the market. You can actually go and look at individual properties. Um, AirDNA recently redesigned their user interface, so you can do this really, really easily. And you can basically look at all the properties in a given market, and you can sort by top performing and see the top performing properties exactly what they have that allows them to stand out and perform so well and be those top performing properties in the area. Guys, just want to take a quick break here to say that for those of you watching who want to build cash flow and long term wealth by purchasing Airbnbs and short term rental properties, there's a link in the description right down below for a free training that'll walk you through my exact strategy for investing successfully in Airbnbs. Now, if you're not ready to actually buy properties and you wanna get started managing other people's properties on Airbnb the same way I got started and build a full-time income managing other people's properties, there's actually another free training linked in the description down below as well that'll be a really great fit for you. So whether you wanna invest in short-term rental properties and actually build amazing cash flow and long-term wealth by acquiring the assets, buying the properties themselves, or you're looking to earn a full-time income managing other people's properties on Airbnb, we've got some awesome trainings that are linked in the description down below that'll definitely help you out. When you sign up for the trainings, we're also gonna send you a few other tools and resources completely for free just to help you get started. Again, the links to sign up are in the description down below and both trainings and all the tools are completely free. So make sure to register for the trainings, links in the description down below. Now, a lot of it is gonna to have to do with the actual property itself. I'm not saying go and take your two bedroom place and renovate it for multi-millions of dollars to turn into a great big mansion. What I am saying though is that there are going to be amenities that you can either duplicate or mimic in a similar way in order to get the same kind of effect and it's probably gonna actually make a really big difference on your total booking revenue, your occupancy rate, things like that. And so what you wanna do, for example, is Maybe you go and you look and you see that they have mini putt set up in the back here. They've got a full basketball court. They've got a tennis court. Can you replicate that? No. What you can do is mimic the spirit of it. What that is ultimately is just a bunch of games and sports that people can engage in when they're at the property. So could you set up can jam? in the backyard? Could you set up spike ball in the backyard? Could you set up bocce ball, cornhole, things like that? Yes, absolutely. You can do that at just about any property that has a backyard and you can do it for a lot less expense than adding mini putt or adding a basketball court, things like that. Now, by all means, if you can afford to and you have the space to go all out and add some of those additional amenities, it'll likely make a really big difference. It'll set you apart dramatically from the competition. But if you can't, don't be dissuaded by the amount of space you have or the budget that you have, you can probably still achieve a very similar effect without having to go all out on it. Similarly, if they have a great big movie theater with movie theater seating, things like that, you might be able to actually recreate that in your property or you might have to tone it down a bit and just get a $400, $600 projector off Amazon, get a nice couple hundred dollars on a surround sound system or a sound bar, get a nice really comfortable couch with lots of seating, maybe a sectional, and then boom, you've got the same spirit, the same activity recreated. Sure, it's not gonna be as high budget and as cool as that one, 
but it's still gonna allow people fundamentally when they stay with you at that lower price range than what you're where you're gonna be charging, they still get that same experience of being able to hang out, watch a movie with the family, and have a really good time doing it. And so you can tone these things down, you can adjust them, you can expand them in different ways in order to make them fit to your property specifically and the section of the market, the segment of the market that you're actually going after. You might not have a property that's catered to super high in luxury, and so you can do these things on more of a budget and make it more run of the mill. Maybe you do have a super high end property and then you can just directly mimic them. You might also find that some of the properties are actually really comparable to yours. That's one thing I love to do when going into AirDNA top properties is I find the properties that are actually really comparable to mine, but they're actually just doing better. Sometimes I can't do that because sometimes my property is the best performer in the market and that's a really great place to be. But whenever I can, I like to find the properties that really are the best performers and are similar to mine. And I just look for what do they have that I don't have? What are they doing that I'm not doing? And sometimes it may come down to just some pricing optimization things, or maybe it's better photography or better listing description. But a lot of the times it's more than that. A lot of times it is really just the amenities that they have, the things that they're offering to guests that you're not offering. And so that's a really great way to draw inspiration, to figure out what you need to add to make your listing easier even more competitive. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope you can actually implement this right now today in your listing because I can tell you without a doubt, this is going to be something that will allow you to collect more nightly rates, collect higher nightly rates, connect, uh, collect more bookings on your property and ultimately make a lot more money as a short-term rental investor, host, property manager even. Um, heck, if you're listing on short-term rental platforms, then doing any of these things is gonna dramatically improve the performance of your listing. So I'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below if you've done any of this stuff and hear from the results that you've gotten from doing it. I'd also love if you would take just half a second if you got any kind of value from this video, if you liked it, if you just wanna help me out and support me a little bit in a very small little way, just take take half a second and hit that like button down below the video. It really does help me out more than you can imagine. Um, and last but not least, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel as well. If you wanna stay up to date with the two new videos you post every single week on the channel, they're completely free. The whole point is just to help you become a better short-term rental investor, property manager, host, uh, whatever it might be. So make sure you're subscribed if you wanna stay up to date with those two new videos every single week. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.